Okay, so welcome to today's webinar, constipation, preventing constipation, and what to do if someone is constipated. So the points we'll be covering today are preventing constipation, dietary needs, recording bowel movements, suggested actions to support the plan of care. So constipation, having a regular bowel movement is important for staying healthy. It plays a major role in how you feel physically and emotionally while removing waste from your body. Constipation is a common condition that affects people of all ages. It can mean that you are not passing stools regularly or you're unable to complete emptying your bowel. Constipation can also cause your stools to be hard and lumpy as well as unusually large or small stools. Is it constipation? It's likely to be constipation if the service user has not had a bowel movement at least three times during the last week. Their stool is often large and dry, hard or lumpy. The service user is straining or in pain when they have a bowel movement. They may also have a stomach ache and feel bloated or sick. If you're caring for someone with dementia, constipation may be easily missed. Look out for any behavioural changes, as it might mean they're in pain or discomfort, and this might be because of constipation. What causes constipation? Constipation in adults has many possible causes. Sometimes there's no obvious reason. But the most common causes include not eating enough fibre, which is found in fruits, vegetables, cereals, not drinking enough fluids, not moving enough and spending long periods sitting or lying down, being less active and not exercising, often ignoring the urge to go to the toilet, changing your diet or daily routine, a big one which is obviously a side effect of medicine, and also stress, anxiety and depression. So how can we support a service user with constipation? So we can make simple changes to diet and lifestyle, and this can help treat constipation. First of all, drink plenty of fluids, try and avoid alcohol. A hydrated body is a happy body. Foods high in water like fruit, vegetables can be an important part of the fluid intake. Increase the fiber in their diet and bulking agents such as Weetabix. Add some wheat bran, oats or linseed to their diet. There's obviously other dietary supplements um, that you can give as well. Um, you know, you have the drinks as well, the bulking agents to ensure they get enough fiber in their diet. Keep to a regular time and place to spend time on the toilet. Resting feet on a low stool while going to the toilet may help, if possible, raising knees above the hips. If a service user feels the urge to go, do not delay. Increasing activity where possible, a daily walk, probably obviously not running, um, can help and obviously laxatives as well. I had a question yesterday uh, on Tuesday's webinar regarding uh, bed bound people, obviously increasing activity is extremely hard. Um, you may use alternative methods, um, laxatives, um uh, bits and pieces like that because obviously if they're bed bound you can't really increase their activity it's nearly impossible to do that so care planning for constipation so this is where the care beans product really comes into its own um we have continence care plans with the need golden support and risk assessments attached and we're going to go through the whole care plan you will receive a copy of the care plan as well so you can use it as a template the Bristol stool chart to record bowel movements, bowels not open. Uh, the food chart to record food intake to evidence foods high in fibre are being provided. And then fluid charts with targets to ensure the service user is well hydrated. So obviously on the Care Beans platform, uh, you can now put in targets for individuals. And we also have a new target you can put in. So if someone doesn't have 50% of their fluid intake by a certain time of the day it can alert the manager so you can really keep an eye on fluid targets because fluids have a major impact not only on constipation major impact on uh, dementia patients um, 
who sometimes come very confused if they don't have enough fluids in their body, uh, as you probably already know. So this is a really good way uh, of um, managing that. So we're going to use the CareBeans platform. So I'm going to go onto the platform now. And leave. Let me just get into the platform. So today's we're going to use Sally Webb as our example. And I hope you can all see the screen. Uh, we had a bit of a technical problem um, before, but um, I think it's all OK now. So you should be able to see Sally Webb uh, on our screen now. And what we're going to do today is we're going to go through the contents care plan. We're going to go through the Bristol stool. We're going to do the food chart and the fluid charts as well. So first of all, we're going to go into Sally's care plan. So I've actually just put a name up here. Here's all my service users. And I've actually just uh, searched for her on here with the Sally web. So here on Sally's care plan, as you can see, she, her care plan was uh, red. It's because these particular care plans here are out of date. So they need updating. Contents care plan, which concentrating on today, has been reviewed. Uh, and we're going to look into the contents care plan now. So we're going to click into the care plan. And as you can see, first thing you have is the review summer, summary. So every time you do your, your review, it automatically defaults it to the next month uh, or 31 days. And then you can write your review in here. We, we save every single copy of the care plan as well. And you can see all the reviews when they were reviewed, et cetera. And you have your consent for your care plan, your dependency level and a care plan summary for your hospital transfer as well. So as you can see, we have the review here. We then have any assessments. We don't have any assessments for the continents here, but we do have a care plan and risk assessment. So first of all, we're going to look at the care plan. So what are the service users needs? And for Sally, Sally is prone to constipation. So that's the need of the individual. What are the service users desired goals and outcomes? Obviously, to have regular bowel movements and be comfortable. All Sally support requirements are to be met in this area so that Sally can remain as independent as possible and have privacy and dignity maintained at all times. So that's our desired goal for this area of continence. And then we come to the support required to achieve the desired goals and outcomes. And as you can see here, we have a bowel chart, food chart, and fluid chart in place. If you don't know, we have this fantastic feature here where you can actually um, put in uh, constipation. You can actually put in uh, pre-configured text in the back end of the system and you can drop it straight in. We've actually written all these for you in the back end of the system to ensure that you're providing best practice, but you do have to obviously amend, delete as appropriate. But what you can basically do is you can find what area of support you need for this particular plan of care, which is constipation. If you click that, that will then drop all this information straight into the care plan for you. And then you can delete what you don't need um, and person center it. As you say, it does put, put Sally's name throughout the content as well. So as you can see here, we have a bowel chart, food chart, fluid chart in place. To avoid constipation, Sally should be supported to do the following. And there's a load of uh, actions that we should do. Drink plenty of fluids, food in high water content, increase the fiber in the diet, add some wheat, bran or oats, keep a regular time and place to be spent for toileting, rest feet on a low stool. If Sally feel the urge to go, don't delay, increase activity where possible and laxatives. Sally has PRN laxatives prescribed. And then we have some care actions, prompt, and support Sally to use the bathroom and check clothes, underwear are not soiled. Ensure the call bell is in reach. You will get a copy of this so you can read it for yourselves. Um, support Sally by practicing universal precautions. Record any episodes of incontinence. Encourage Sally to practice excellent hand hygiene. Staff, to, staff need to use personal protective equipment. Ensure Sally's laundry is managed and any waste is disposed of safely. Make appropriate referrals to the GP. Offer Sally any psychological support. Make sure that Sally's privacy and dignity is maintained at all time by ensuring doors, curtains are closed when any personal care is given. 
Staff must explain to Sally any interventions that are taking place. If Sally has not opened her bowels for three days, alert the seniors. And Sally is at risk of overflow diarrhea, is not to be mistaken to actual diarrhea and treated appropriately. See the risk assessment below. So that is a really, really decently written care plan. So you've got the need of the individual, you've got the desired goals, and then you've got all of the instruction that you need. And again, you can support these with care plans. Uh, and these are all linked because they're on the same. So we have risk of overflow diarrhea. So on here, we have risk type constipation. Please double check the stall chart has been put in place and recorded in the support section above, which we have. This is risk of overflow diarrhea. And the risk area is care plan continence. And then we have the risk score. It's, it's a serious thing for the service user. So this is the impact on the service user. And it's possible. OK, if it was rare, the risk would change. If it's unlikely, the risk would change again if it's possible. And it's a high risk for Sally for um, risk of overflow diarrhea. And again, we've got the risk detail here. Sally is prone to constipation. And again, you will get a copy of the risk assessment as well. So you've got your risk detail. You've got your risk triggers, who might be harmed. And then you've got if Sally has severe constipation and then develops diarrhea, please inform seniors and put the bowel chart in place to record the bowel movements. So as you see on here, that's your continence care plan and risk assessments. You can add as many risk assessments as you need. We've only got one for Sally, but you may need more risk assessments. Um, and then we have the Bristol stall chart, which is a care action. OK, so we have a bowel movement as a care action. So this particular one uh, is a bowel chart. Um, select the care plan it needs. So it's uh, continence. Uh, we then added an observation chart. But you can if you don't want to use the Bristol stall chart and you feel it's a bit too nursey. What you can do is you can add a checklist. OK, and there's a checklist called uh continence continence here and this is a checklist you can use instead of an observation like the bristol stall and then again this is a, a bit a little bit easier for residential homes to use select checks required dry unsoiled incontinent so this will then um, enable the carer on their mobile device to tick um, if they've been incontinent and the plus the double plus and the three plus is a uh, little little bit more and lots so you can obviously in pad change, underwear change, and you can create your own checklist in the background. OK, so it's entirely up to you. I'm going to put it back to a bowel observation. You then put your support requirements in and then I want this to alert me every three days. OK, so uh, if they haven't had a bowel movement within three days, this will alert the manager. OK, um, and then you can obviously make sure that uh, it's alerted. Uh, from the manager so this is changes to a scheduled action it's not it's three days it's 12 o'clock so if an alert period is in days then the action will be set due to the target time specified and then you can make mandatory notes uh, notes mandatory are photos allowed for this action do you want to share the outcome with the family and do you want to allow a retry so a retry will allow the carer to retry in an hour uh, 30 minutes, next day, whatever you need to do. So I'm going to save that action now so it's all saved. And I'm going to save and publish the care plan so it's all um, published. Obviously, on each care plan, you have the body map as well. So if uh, there's any issues with pressure areas, pain, medication, skin or wound, that can be all documented. You also have your care history. So this will show you every single care review, every single completed action. Um, and then you can search for these as and when you need to. And then you also have your consent and mental capacity. So this takes you through to the consent and mental capacity as, um, assessments. If you want to see consent and mental capacity uh, webinar, you can uh, you can go onto our website and there's a learn there's free learning resources which will allow you access to all of our previous webinars. So you'll be able to see that as well. So from a carer's point of view, I'm going to just use uh, a bit of software now. So from a carer's point of view, we're going to log on to the system. OK, we're going to search for Sally Webb up the top. 
And this will then find Sally Webb at the top here. And then we're going to go into Sally's uh, in care instructions. It will give you a bit of detail about Sally. So got that. And then here is where we can then do our fluid intake monitoring. So you can click into the fluid intake monitoring and we can then enter 300 mils and it might have been um, orange juice, for example. And you can talk that in if you need to as well. Um, you don't, oh, I've spelt it wrong. <laughs> orange juice. You can alert the handover manager and then you can press done. And then you can press sure. And then that will tick off that action for you. Um, and then it will go straight into your next action, which may be, for example, just going to press sure on that. So you can use it on the web. OK, so this is just showing you how you can do it on the web. Um, obviously, you can also do them straight from. Sorry about that. What's this on there? Let's just get rid of that. You can also do them on the Kera dashboard here. So we've just done the fluid intake. You've then got a food chart, so you can do the food. So you can say they, they ate 75%. It was a snack and it was a biscuit, for example. Biscuit. You can press done. And then again, you can do your fluids. And then here is your bowel chart, okay? So here is your stool type. So it can be type four, type three, type one, type type five, type six, type seven, or BNO. So if the bowels aren't open, you can actually um, show that the bowels haven't been open. So we're gonna say it's a bit lumpy. You can write your notes in there and then you just press done. And that will then obviously write the notes straight into the care plan. So you can see today, uh, she's had orange juice, she's had a bowel movement. Then she also had, um, from nine o'clock this morning, she's had breakfast, she's had some orange juice, she's had an apple water. And obviously you'll have obviously your personal care checks if there's repositioning. These ones are flashing because they're required now. And so they need doing. And as you see, it shows you when they were last done and when they're next due as well. So you can actually see when they're last done and when they're next due. So you can see here this one that we've alerted every three days. So if they don't have a bowel movement within three days, it will alert you via the system. I hope that makes sense. So we're just going to go back to the presentation. So basically, that's today's webinar. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. As I said, we are going to be trying to get these uh, moving forward CBD, CPD approved. Um, so hopefully that will uh, generate a lot more interest in our webinars. Also, you'll get a certificate after them as well. Um, if anyone's got any questions or answers uh, today, please let me know uh, on the chat function. And then I can uh, explain anything that you want me to go through or you want me to um, give you some advice on. And thank you for attending today's webinar on constipation.